Hello, everybody. It is Steve and Brian, and we are back again for another Heavy Crow movie show. Is that what we're calling this? Ew, that's a terrible name. But um, I figured I could kind of free ball like a story, if you don't mind, All right. um, as to what we're talking about. A uh, plot summary is this. In 1963, a little six-year-old boy violently murdered his sister 15 years after being committed to a mental institution because America's mental health care in this country is terrible. He escaped and has decided to terrorize his hometown of Haddonfield, Illinois. Tonight we are talking about 1978's Halloween. Yes, 1978's classic. John Carpenter produced Halloween. And written and directed. And directed, yes. And ha- scored. Yep, yep, that too. Halloween, 1978, right. Yep, starring, 1978. Starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, um, PJ Souls. As Linda, I don't know how I remember her name. Um, who played Annie? Who played Annie? I cannot remember off the top of my head. Um, and actually, believe it or not, one of the housewives in New York was in this movie. Yeah, go figure. As Lindsay Wallace, the little kid. She grew up to be one of the housewives in New York. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, okay. I don't know how I know that, but I do. Let, let's start yeah. fresh. So, okay. Steve, why don't you start, because you are more of a film connoisseur than i am i am i have all these movies memorized yes to so my core yeah i would like us to do a actual real talk about one of your favorite movies and mm-hmm. uh just a cinema classic for me out of us as a film buff um it's 78's halloween uh john carpenter directed of course uh, and it was kind of revolutionary at the time, wasn't it? Kind of. Yes. So the way it worked was when it first came out, it actually did not get very good reviews until one critic was like, this is fucking genius and you're all idiots. Can oh, you guess yeah. who that critic was? Oh, um, uh, uh, Ebert. Yes. It was Roger Ebert who saw how brilliant it was and how simple like, it was. Sis- Siskel probably would have fucking hated it. Siskel loved it. Really? Yes. And he actually was always softer on their show, on the horror movies. I think he just didn't want to tell Ebert that he was a hypocrite later on. But that's a separate discussion for a different day. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, uh, Ebert did write... Um, Valley of the Dolls. Yes, that was the name of it. I, I thought it was the House of the Dolls. I, nope, it was the Valley of the Dolls. Um, so, I don't know about you. <laughs> you have a lot of notes. But, yeah, I brought fucking notes, baby. I came okay. ready to go. Start. All right. So, um... It starts off with a classic, you know, um, fonts. So, mm-hmm. l- little known thing is John Carpenter um, has one particular font he really likes, uh, which is um, Albatross uh, typeface. Um, I did not he, know that. He uses that basically as, uh, I can't imagine a, car- a Carpenter um, like credit mm-hmm. without that font. So... Now you mentioned that, did you catch something in the beginning with the pumpkin? Yes, there is a knife carved into the pumpkin. Not only that, the eye is the shape of Michael Myers' mask. Really? I never so catch I that. So I never caught this until the 2018 movie came out, um, which we will also discuss in the coming weeks as we build up to Halloween Kills. Yes. Um, but yes, the 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 mouth has a little cut and that mm-hmm. I, into the nose and i never caught it was a kitchen knife i never did i just thought it was a pumpkin yeah it, it's, it never occurred to me it was a like, kitchen knife I, so the reason why i finally finally caught it was um i thought i told you uh, yes but we finally saw it on uh you have what the blu-ray i have a regular dvd Okay, so I saw it on a blu-ray cut on a 4k television so i finally finally got to see like how the film actually looks. So, um, okay. So you watched it on a regular DVD because that's just Growing what up, yeah. you have. And um, my most recent was today on um, Roku app of all places. Couldn't find it on Netflix. Couldn't find it on Hulu. Yeah, so there's um there's a lot of weird licensing things involving Halloween. Yeah. Um, because of 
how it was made, who made it. It was a very independent movie. Yeah, so, like, it's it's kind of hard to get on streaming, but Roku got my back, baby! Yeah! Just buy it. Yeah, well, yeah. You fucking Eventually. hypocritical pirate piece of shit. <sighs> Eventually, I will probably buy a, a Criterion collection of sorts for us. I don't us. think it'll ever be a Criterion collection. So, um, I think it might um, be. Do you want to know some behind-the-scenes things I've, that I know? Um, we're gonna go in order of things, man. Okay. So right. bring bring it up when it when it when it comes. All right. To so the, so continue with the font. All right. So like yeah. So you know opens up. Uh, you know with your fonts, your 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 uh surf gothic heavy and and then your you know you know your albatross and comes in with the knife pumpkin and all that. And the amazing score. Yes, and which is created by accident. How was it created? John Carpenter is playing on um I forget what it's called, but it's like uh, he's got a bunch of bars and you hit you do 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 do. You know what I'm talking about? A uh, xylophone. That's it, xylophone. He loved playing with it, and he came up with the do 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 do, and he just added from there, and he once he was done, he loved the theme, um, yeah, and um, that was the theme to Halloween. Yeah, basically the plot of the movie is uh there is a serial uh no i guess not a serial killer no a, he is a serial killer um well he becomes a serial killer he you know, so he starts off as a six-year-old yeah so uh, a six-year-old boy kills his sister for no reason at all no reason at all in 1963 and for 15 years he is commissioned to an insane asylum not only that in the insane asylum he mm-hmm. never speaks he never talks he never does anything he just sits there and is a void so what you don't see is is that there is a rare TV cut of Halloween Uh that shows Dr. Loomis trying to get Michael transferred to a maximum security facility because the Smith's Grove is the name of the sanitarium. Yes. Michael, who we learn in the TV cut, his middle name is Audrey, of all things, which I was like, okay. Um, In the TV cut, which was filmed during the making of Halloween 2, because Halloween is actually kind of a short movie. Yes. Um, just so they need some padding. My, Loomis is convinced that Dr. Loom, Dr. Samuel Loomis is Michael Myers' therapist. Yes. He spent years trying to reach him and spent, what was it? He spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up. Yep. Right? And it was during this time he realized something. Michael is not crazy. He's pure evil and is well aware as to what he is doing. Which, I, I'm sorry, this just brings up the thing that Dr. Loomis is the world's shittiest uh, therapist, but a great detective. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But here's the fun fact. Do you know where his name comes from? Um, No. Psycho. Really? There was a character in... Sci- John Carpenter is a big fan of the movie Psycho. Yes. Uh, which influenced Halloween immensely. And we owe a lot of the slasher film genre to Psycho. And um, I can't remember the other movie off the top of my head. I think it was like Black Christmas and a few other movies. Peeping Tom... These were horror films that were basically about relatively, quote unquote, normal people committing these murders or crimes instead of Dracula or Frankenstein's monster for yeah. the umpteenth time. In Psycho, there is a character named Marion Crane who steals from her job, and all, but her boyfriend's name was Sam Loomis. Oh, nice. And as a tribute to him, to the movie... Samuel Loomis, the doctor, is named mm-hmm. after a character. And no, they are not the same person. <laughs> People have tried to do, like, I've seen fan theories try to try to paint. No, it. it's just, I mean, like, and the timeline doesn't. You work. can have two Bob Johnsons in the same town. They're not the same person. Yeah, yeah. and 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 it, they're not the same person. So, so yes. Um, so the film takes place in Chicago. Nope. Uh, so, sorry, uh, Illinois. Il- Illinois, Haddonfield, um, Illinois, Haddonfield. which is a fictional town. Haddonfield, Illinois, um, where Michael Myers, after 15 years, uh, since the age of six, uh, escapes incarceration from the mental institute and goes back home. Um, and in doing so, he finds uh, Lori Str- Strode, Strode um, a high schooler um, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Who was actually a teenager at the time. Um she my, was 18 years old. My math said she was 24, but I, no. I'm bad no, at math. She was born in 1960. Okay. Um, 1978, yeah, uh, 1960. Do the math. Yeah, I'm bad at math. You I, were I, terrible. I, yeah. 
<laughs> it's okay. Um, so okay. I failed ba- math class too. Thanks, public education. Basically, she walks up. Uh, her dad's a realtor, I mm-hmm. guess. Her um, dad's a real estate agent. And they're trying to sell the old Myers house. Which has not been like lived in Since for obvious reasons. For about, a, for about a decade. Now, mind you, we don't know what happened to the Myers family. We, in the entire franchise, as far as I know... They probably changed names, changed towns. Nothing is, is ever established about what happened to Michael Myers. My- no, wait, I, it's not true. I forgot. They are That is addressed in a line of dialogue in Halloween 2. Mm-hmm. His parents died in a drunk driving accident. Oh, well, that's... Yeah. Well, so he decides that... So Michael is somehow obsessed with, like, people who remind him of his sister. He was obsessed with his sister. You you don't... You don't... They're not... They don't explain this. It's kind of just... You go, well... So... His sister was about 17, and this is a 17-year-old, so I guess he likes 17-year-olds. So in his little warped mind... He's trying to kill his sister again, and thus he goes on a rampage throughout the night. Which is uh, funny, because now, Halloween has had numerous different timelines and continuities. It is a giant mess. If you think the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with all of its variant timelines and all that, mm-hmm. is complex, you have not fucking entered my world, man. Well, it's a good thing, because we're going to go through all of them. No, no, we're not. Well, no, no maybe. we could. Maybe. I we don't know. We could. I mean, I have them memorized, too. <laughs> I've made them to memory. <laughs> it's like... It's, you're fucking like the, try me. You're like the Rain Man, but with, with <laughs> shitty <laughs> movies. <laughs> um, just real quick. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is in your notes, I don't know if you know this. Yes. So, in Halloween 2, mm-hmm. it is revealed that yes. they are a brother and sister. And it is a terrible reveal that makes no fucking sense. So, okay, so I guess I have always seen, like, two and, like, four. Yes. Um, those Which works just, off the family uh, time. Those probably were just on TV a lot growing up. Which um, is kind of strange. I never really saw one, or if I did saw one, it, it looked... I probably saw a bunch of them... But I only saw pieces of them, so I just assumed it was always just one movie, you know? Like, Boy, that would be a way like more he's interesting just, movie. he's just trying to kill his sister. So, that immediately... So, it wasn't the fact that he was obsessed with Lori. It's literally chance encounter. Because if you yes. caught it, he killed someone before he ever met Lori Strode. Really? So, there's a scene where Donald Pleasance, who plays Dr. Loomis... Yes. He's um, on the trail of Michael's Michael. after he He escapes. stops at a payphone. Yes. Which, children, if you don't know what a payphone is, you have to pay to use the phone. Or or, if, a booth. You, or if you were Mike, my ghetto ass, uh, you um, called collect, and <laughs> oh, then you Jesus. said whatever information um, in the, like, the 10 seconds I gave you to state your name. And then you hung up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. I never had change on me, man. I was broke as shit. I never used a payphone. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I remember, I never used it. But um, uh-huh. anyway, so Loomis stops on the side of the road because he's been following Michael's trail. He finds um, that Michael's uh, garments are on the side of the road, and there's a there is a red truck. Yeah. Like, I, I remember. It was like a red pickup it's, it's, truck. It's like a utility truck. Like someone's like, But there's a dead yeah. body yep. stripped down to the undies. Yep. Michael killed him. Well... I mean, he might have taken the underwear. We don't know. We you, you don't see that much. Michael's like, hey man, I need a new pair, of Johns. I'm sorry, man. They, they've been giving me the same loincloth for like <laughs> ten years, man. This like, thing is hey, ripe. Look, this ain't nothing personal, friend. But these are much clean. <laughs> <laughs> so so I guess she, it was just I, random. I don't I don't know how we want to do this. Do we want to go just through the movie? If you want to, let's just go. I, through I have it. enough memory of it. Yeah, let's just go through the so. The movie starts basically... Um, As we've said like five times. Yeah. Loomis is driving up to take uh, Michael. So, um, so okay. Here's where he's taking Michael to. He's is taking he, him to a judge. To So, what it is is that it's the day before Halloween. Yes. Okay. It, Michael's birthday was recently. He's 21 years old. This makes him legally eligible to be tried again as an adult yes. or see if he's actually even insane loomis however is thoroughly convinced that michael is not insane at all and is instead pure literal evil which try proving that in court he knows he can't so what he's going to try to do is most likely have michael so drugged up out of his mind yeah which he even says like we're going to give him thorazine and the nurse is like, like why are you giving him that 
Yes. Like he's not going to be able to like do anything but sit there. He's like that's the he's point. He's like that is the point. I never ever 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 want him out again. So when they go to pick him up at Smith's Grove Sanitarium from the criminally insane, this they see patients wandering outside. Which okay, uh, is terrifying. That's that was the legitimately the most horrifying thing. Just seeing just a bunch of like people in nightgowns out in the rain. Yeah. That's I, that triggers something in my brain that there's something wrong here. Yeah. Um, like, now, we don't know if Michael killed anybody. It's never stated. Uh, if he, he must have. Probably. Michael escapes. He attacks the nurse. He pulls her out of the car while Loomis went to the gate to try to figure out what was going on. Yeah. Michael escapes, and Loomis says, he's gone from here. The evil is gone. Yes. He literally says, the evil is gone. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. Now, <laughs> there is something interesting. Loomis slowly stops referring to him as a person and rather as it. Yes. It's very it's very important, um, the language used in the script, where everyone refers to him as Michael, except Loomis. Loomis treats him like an apex predator, which does come up thematically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he's also credited as the shape. He's yes. never called it, but he's credited as the shape. Yes. Which brings me up to the point, and kudos to them. They bring it up in the movie. How the fuck does he know how to drive? So, Loomis is... This is actually answered in one of the sequels. Really? Yes. So, Loomis is talking to a gentleman named Dr. Wynn. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, well, for God's sake, Sam, how does he even know how to drive a car? Well, I don't know. He was doing pretty good last night. Someone Dr. Was... Wynn mm-hmm. appears again mm-hmm. in Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers in 1995. Okay. <laughs> and it is revealed... I'm not going into this right now because we do not have time to go into that. He tried to. Nope. No. It's, nope. He didn't try nope. to like, just like here, let's teach you how to be a person. So I have two. I have two explanations. Okay. The one that is like obviously given to us in like the, the franchise is that there is a cult that is controlling Michael and okay. they probably taught him. Okay. And then my explanation is this thing about it. Michael was driven. Michael is a very Michael. Unlike Jason Voorhees, unlike Leatherface, he's probably very smart. He's a highly intelligent person. It's very obvious that he's extremely intelligent. Yeah. He's done nothing but sit there and probably just study over the years. Of, like, what Going people... back and forth, back and forth, Of, back like, and how forth. to operate something. It's you not know. that hard once you, like, pay attention. Not yeah, hard I mean, like, out. I mean, shit, if I can drive, then, you know, train... Hey, if, if Michael Myers can drive kids, anyone can drive. Yeah. Um, so, Michael takes the state vehicle back to Haddonfield. Yes. Fun fact about Haddonfield. There mm-hmm. is a Haddonfield, New Jersey. Yes. Which is where writer, co-writer and co-producer mm-hmm. Deborah Hill, who is like considered the mm-hmm. godmother of the series until her unfortunate passing in 2005. Yes. Um, I think it was 2005. She died in the early 2000s. She really is what championed Michael Myers' creation. Right. Um, so, side note. Crystal Lake... Illinois. Is in, nope, Crystal Lake. Oh, there is a Crystal Lake in Illinois. Yes. And there's a Hanfield, New Jersey. But fun fact. Is they're swapped. In they're swapped in, in the movies. They're yes. swapped. Yes. It's hilarious. Yeah. That's, Haddonfield is where Deborah Hill was from. Yeah. That's just a, that's just a weird. It's a big coincidence. Yeah. Um, so. But it'd be a funny ass piece of trivia on IMDb if Michael versus Jason ever let's happens. Let's see. Um, so actually, hold on. We got to back up to the very beginning. Didn't we do this? No. Okay, so the very beginning of the movie, actually, Correct. we're wrong. Correction. We're wrong. Uh, it shows... Um, it's all through first-person perspective. Yes, uh, which Friday the 13th would later rip off. Um, of, of little baby Michael, a uh, six-year-old on Halloween 1963, killing his sister. And it's all shot through like POV, and he's in the it's it's the camera from the camera's perspective. It's like he moving. It's his eyes. It's his eyes, but it's moving. It's very obvious. It's a person moving the camera. It's not a tracking or dolly shot. It is someone with a camera holding it, moving around. Okay, like an animal, a predatory animal stalking its prey. And when he comes up to his sister, and of course he kills him. And well, before that, he grabs a kitchen knife. Yeah, he grabs a kitchen knife, goes upstairs, kills his sister. Almost no blood. You get tits in the first five seconds. Michael. Yeah. Which it's a. Like, what are you doing, little perf? You know, like, like, like what the fuck, you little bastard? Like, dude, you're sick. He's six. So he's like, get out of here, man. Like, he's too young to understand. Yeah, you know. So you know, um, 
But this POV stuff quickly stops once we're out of the Michael vision. Then it goes back to a traditional style camera. And this theme, this motif, goes throughout the film. Every time we're near Michael or following Michael's perspective, it's through man with a camera style mm-hmm. of someone literally walking with the camera. Not tracking, not dollies, not rolling, no tilts. It's a person with a camera moving. Which is interesting because Halloween like stops this as, as the movies go on. Well, yeah. Well, obviously the the... the the, They're treating him more just like Jason. The real thing is that p- you lose your art, and B, it's probably probably a lot of that was coincidental. Like, no. they, they needed to do a few shots. What I mean is, okay, from my perspective, mm-hmm. having grown up on both Friday the 13th and Halloween, uh-huh. Halloween always had, like, a little bit more... Uh, when Michael, Michael Myers, to me, was... Slower and more methodical than Jason Voorhees. Jason yes. Voorhees is more of a hunter. He's aggressive. He'll break shit. Yes. So in Halloween, like you said, we see a lot of his perspective. We don't really see this again until Halloween 2. And then after that, we don't see it again until Halloween 2018. Because they the franchise has morphed at that point. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. It morphed quick. It's no longer a carpenter thing. It's 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 a, it's, it's money, a money, 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 money. So you lose that, that artistic. With this first one, those predator shots could be a motif. It most likely is. But it also could have been like... John Carpenter had like ten dollars to make this fucking movie. Like they're literally had, picking up the fake lead. So, do you know where the mask comes from? Um, it is a fat, bloated corpse of of a Star Trek captain. Yes and no. <laughs> is, is, so is, there is were it, four masks. Okay. Their original mask was that they were going to use was a clown mask to continue the clown motif, but mm-hmm. they felt that that was too gimmicky, so they yeah. It that. also is like hey, everyone's afraid of clowns. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah everyone. Thanks, John Wayne Gacy. Mm. Prick. No, people have always been afraid of clowns. Oh, I know, I know. But um, so then they had a a Richard Nixon mask, but they felt that that was too political, so yeah. they pitched that. Yeah. They had Spock, who they almost used. Mm-hmm. Then they had a uh, another mask. It was not Star. It was not Captain Kirk. Okay. It's a, from a movie Bill Shatner did. I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, but in the movie. He is possessed, and his eyes turn black. That's where the movie. Okay. That's where it's uh, from. We. Um, as Steve is looking it up, I will continue the story of the mask. Tommy Lee Wallace was the set designer and um, a lot of different things in the movie. Also part stuntman. <laughs> There's, so Michael was played by like eight people in this movie, by the way. Um, he took the mask home and he made it fish belly white. Dyed the hair brown, so that way there's a better contrast. Took off the sideburns and enlarged the eye holes. So you could not see the actor's eyes. It made the most terrifying thing on film. So did you find the origin? Um, let's see now. And unfortunately, the mask isn't destroyed, but is in horrible condition and is now with a collector in Ohio. Oh, 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 okay. You're thinking of The Devil's Reign. Okay, that's it. from Thank 1975. You. Thank you. I knew okay. it was something, something. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's... That, that's, that's... It took us a very long time. That is, uh, if you show... So, yeah, there is a so... picture on michaelmyers.net of... That picture is a couple years old. So, yeah, it's... The mask has pretty... not... I mean, it's in... a cheap-ass Halloween mask. It was 98 mask. cents. It was, yeah. So, that, that, I mean, that shit, like, if you, pro- you, if you put it on now, you'd probably get cancer. Probably. Um, if you actually couldn't put it on now. Yeah. Really so, let's go back to it. Um, <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, um, the movie starts with that. We go to Lori. It's Lori's day. It's liter- So, I. that's what I like about this movie is that it literally starts with the first, like, just dawn, basically. Lori's, she's up. She's going to school. So, it's like, like let's just say 7 a.m. All right. Follows her throughout the day she goes to school uh michael finds her at her house and he goes well she's the one i'm killing that's 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 pretty much it it's It's random chance yes it's no it's not random chance Uh uh-uh because in literally the next scenes all right we're just gonna skip a few key scenes here um laurie's at school and she's in class She's in a literature class, and they're talking about fate. 
Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So that. it is a nat. It's 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 a thing of nature, a destiny that cannot be changed. It's a natural force, and you have to embrace that destiny. So, fun fact: this actually appears in two other Halloween movies. Yes, this is this is a core theme of the franchise as a whole. Is that like some things are just a fate, a a natural force of evil or good, and you have to fight it. You have to embrace that fate. You can't go against it. You have to take it on. Mm-hmm. So it's Lori's fate that she has to fight this thing. Okay. It's um, a cruel fate. Yes, it is a cruel. F- well, the 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 book that they're talking about, the dude's getting a rough fucking deal. All right, he's getting a raw deal, and he's cursing fate because like it's like this is bullshit. I'm getting like my ass kicked here. Like what the hell? Um. So let's know. Um, yeah. Uh, a little Meanwhile, sm- yeah. Uh, Loomis is following Michael, and he decides to. I forget why does he go to the cemetery? Um, he's just kind of like tracing through what like he where, knows about Michael. He know he knows what, he, and he's thinking like, where is Michael probably going? He's like, well, maybe he's gonna like. I don't know. He knows from a psychological point. A lot of these guys who are obsessed with things they've done probably going to go and dig up the body or some shit so he finds um judith his, myers his tombstone is missing his sister's tombstone and uh, hats off to this gravekeeper guy he is doing such a stephen fucking king like main guy mm-hmm. like there's like damn kids and they're Fucking teenager. I wouldn't be surprised if Stephen King even got inspiration from that because Carrie had just come out. Oh, yeah. Well, I, Which actually, there's a Stephen King connection to this movie. PJ Souls, who is one uh-huh. of two of Lori's best friends. Uh-huh. Lin- uh, Linda? Yes. Yes. That's uh, who I was thinking about. Not Linda, Lindsay, Linda. Um, Linda is actually one of the main bullies in Carrie. Yes. That and is that's correct. why she yes. was cast, is that she had. It's, it's almost. One for one, the same character, except she's not a bitch. Yeah, uh, we should probably do Carrie. I haven't seen Carrie. I've seen it. Um, I think I think it time. just it just it just resonated with me in a way that I'm like, I I can't. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. And these three, they are even by today's standards, they are friends. Like you can buy their friendship. You can yeah. believe. Like Annie's kind of like Annie is the daughter of the sheriff of the town. Annie Brackett, I believe. Mm-hmm. And Linda, I don't know if we ever learned Linda's last name. Uh, huh? It was on, it was like, Vanderclot or something like that. Um, anyway, but yeah, so, but she's, like, the popular girl, and he's the kind of tough-ish one. Mm-hmm. Like, she's the one you would think would actually fight Michael Myers. Yeah, but... Lori's the mousy, quiet one. Yes. And there's a perfect example of when they're, they're walking down the street after school... Mm-hmm. And they're talking about, like, boys, and, you know, I think mm-hmm. it was, like, what, a dance coming up? Yeah, and, and they both had dates, except Lori. Lori, who they were going to try to set up with a guy named Bed Tramer. Mm-hmm. And there is a car mm-hmm. speeding down the road. Mm-hmm. And Annie is the one to shout, hey, freak, speed he, kills. And the car just stops. Oh, and the music. And I, and I love it, because it's, it's him. Yeah, you know it's him. And you can even see Michael just staring at them. Yeah, and, like, you're just thinking, like, oh. Oh, is it, oh, is it go time? Is he, is he's just sitting there like, I can just fucking turn this around. I'm just going to run their asses over. No, I'm just going to, you know what? You know what? I'm here. I'm home. I'm trying to relax. I just broke out of a mental institution. I probably broke numerous federal laws. I'm just trying to chill. And they shouted at me, mama. So, so, so uh, with that also in that scene, I really like it, um, is uh, that the other two are passing a cigarette. But, you know, who's not smoking? Lori. Lori. She's not smoking uh, because she's more of the, 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 the nicer girl. So, John Carpenter based her off of, actually, the, he based all these characters off of people he knew. Yes. And um, Lori was actually based off an ex-girlfriend he had. Yeah, oh, of course. And you, you're right, Rich. You know. um, so, Lori is, is kind of seen as, there's this subtext that's always been brought up with Halloween that mm-hmm. I've never really bought into right. of sexual frustration. Um... I don't really buy into I can, it. I can see where you can get those themes, but I don't know if they're intentional. They're or definitely not. not. John Carpenter's explanation as to why everyone's having sex in a movie is that you're distracted. Yeah. 
it's, You're too busy. It's 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 the fucking seventies. What, like, what everyone the, was doing it, man. Xboxes weren't around yet, okay? These <laughs> kids had nothing else to do but drink and fuck. Which, if you've ever seen John Carpenter talk, he's always in the same position and always has a cigarette in his hand. Oh, his yeah, hand, no, that's why everyone hairs. smokes in this movie. because he, he was he, smoking he, like he, a chimney. Yeah, because it's like, well, the, the cigarettes, I mean... Are mine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I bought them. Yeah. So, um, so Michael uh, stops... And the music kind of picks up a little bit. Now, earlier we did see him follow them. Yes. Briefly. He poked his head out of a bush. Then when they turn, uh, they turn to Cor- Lori's like, Annie, who is that? And she's like, what are you talking about? She's the one who runs up to the bush. Yes. And he's gone. He's yeah. just ghosted. She's like, oh, real funny asshole. Like, thinking that he's going to get, like, someone in the neighborhood, like, is punking them, you know? Like, oh, you know what, you dick shit? Like, yeah. Yeah. Here. Like, because, like, People in the 70s did shit like that. Yeah. And that's why they were all serial murdered. You don't do that today. Yeah, no. You, this you, is what happened. You, you do this today, you get your ass beat. That's yeah, just what happens. Yeah, exactly. You get dragged down. Imagine and, and, if he pulled that shit in, like today. Like, all right, you know what? Put, you, come here. Here's what's happening. You're getting your ass beat in, while you're screaming. Robbed. It's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. And you get robbed and your mask stolen and your shoes taken. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You always got to take the shoes. That's the beating <laughs> point. Take, his, take his, his Timberlands. You know why people do that, right? Why? So you can't run after them. <laughs> I still would. Um, so... <laughs> Um, Lori is babysitting, so she can't, uh, hang out. Um, I might be getting the order of things. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, these bit. scenes are kind they of all, all do the, blur together into, like, um, one But, big like, day. it's cohesively we're in the, on the same page here. Like, you know, they're, they're freaked out, and they're, they're, cr- so, like, it goes or from. Who's Lori is? Like, it goes from morning, and then school, and then after school, and that's when, Lori starts to notice, like, there's this fucking dude that's been following me. Like, yeah, I saw she even him. looks out her window like, and sees in the neighbor's yard. Which is an iconic scene. Um, yeah, he's there. And then here's the weird thing, though. He's there, and then she flinches. He's just suddenly not yeah, there. No, so what, so, he run away? So no, so that's, that's, that's why I think it's so iconic. Because that's the first time that they both have a clear sight of each other. Bam, he is here. And then she goes, oh, what? And she flinches, and then he's just gone like a ghost. Mm-hmm. And you just don't know, like, like, okay, it's Halloween. It's also the first time the audience truly sees yeah, him. Yeah, that is the first time we see him, and that she sees him. That's why it's so just, bam. Um, and it it's, before, and he was kind of far away. He was kind of there you, for one And minute. you never really see his head, really. I mean, you see it for like a second, but you can't make yeah, out what you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, but you don't see it. This is the first time it's like, it's there. Um, and, you know, with the with the flapping of the uh, laundry Bad there, sheets, it's yeah. it's kind of like ghostly. Uh, it's a very iconic scene just for like that quick, just, you know, quick snap and it's, and it's gone. You got um, Thanos dusted. And then, uh, you know, follow that up with like the comedic timing of the phone call, which adds the extra horror. Um and of course, you know, she's so freaked out she takes a nap immediately. Um I'm sorry, I went too. I'm like, you know what, I'm laying now. Um, but you know, in her defense, it's Halloween. It could have just been like some like it could just be some douchebag walking around. Like we have all had that Halloween. Yeah, everyone's got especially today, especially with like the fact that he's so iconic now with Halloween. Everyone's walking around as him being fucking Ooh. Yeah, like everyone's it's it's so much just being like a prankster. It's cause it's Halloween, you know? Um which even like later on we get the iconic uh, thing like she's freaked out and she runs into the sheriff. He goes, "Oh, didn't mean to scare you. I guess it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare." Like you know what? Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> He's like, "Dude, it, like I'm like just, fuck. Like you want to get shot? I'll grab your service um, weapon and blow your brains out." So then you know it's 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 uh, it's it's late a li- afternoon. It's late afternoon. Lori's you, gone. Go you, babysit, and you, so is Annie. Yeah. So like they're driving. Our, it, I'm confused. Are they in their own neighborhood? Or are they like like a block down or something? So from what like, I understand, it the seems house, like they just sort of drove around just to like waste gas. In, in real life, they were probably just driving in a circle, but they yeah. were likely driving from one end of, one end of Haddonfield to the other. I guess they're trying to let's say like it's a small town. It everything. Whereas they actually filmed this in Burbank, California. Yeah. Oh, so that brings me to another point. Early in the scenes, they're walking out of the high school. And there's all these ex- open to the environment lockers, which really just goes. We were filming this in Burbank because, and so is the palm trees. Yeah, like there is no way in fuck that there is going to be students that have to go outside to their lockers in Illinois. No way in hell 
because <laughs> it's like, oh, well, well, you know, I would have been late. I, I was late to math class because my fucking hands were frozen in my locker. Sorry. Um, and also, a tiny fun fact about all the outdoor scenes. Mm-hmm. All the leaves you're seeing yes. were handmade and yeah, had to be picked it, up it, you, at the end of every shoot. You kind of saw that, um, at least even on the shitty Roku version, which I don't know if it was my version or what, but it seems like the music was too loud. Like, it could have been your version. Like, Oftentimes they'd be speaking, but like the themes would like overpower the dialogue to almost like inaudible. Yeah, it's gotta be your. Yeah, it's just like the weird streaming. So mix. they're driving and they're talking and they're hanging out, and this is where Lori finally gives in from. No, I don't want to say peer pressure or anything, but, but she does start smoking. Yeah, and she smokes pot. Okay, which at the time, today it's not a big deal. Nobody gives a fuck. But, but back I mean, then, I mean. It's kind of showing, too, that, like, she wants to be cool like her friend. Yeah, now, wants, here's... She wants to be cool. She wants to have sex with all the boys and smoke pot. Mm-hmm. But here's the key detail of that scene, okay? Her friend... Uh, what's her friend? Who's, Annie. An, so, Annie's taking that, and she's smoking it like a cigarette, no problem. Lori, on the other hand, she's smoking it like we would, just with two, two hands... Like, clipping it, like, just, ooh, I don't want to be- burn my fingies. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this. And she's <coughs> she's coughing, you know? The hands it back to her and never smokes again. Yeah, you know? And then Annie's just, shh, do 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 fuck, hats playing on the radio, you know? Just, you know? <laughs> so, fun fact about the radio. Mm-hmm. Is this is my favorite fun fact, because... Oh, I'm sure it is. So, I'm a... Steve in real life knows that I'm a big fan of the band Blue Oyster Cult. Yes. They had a, a song in 1976 called Don't Fear the Reaper. Which I think you listen to a... About once a day. Yes. But no. Um, but no, in all seriousness, the song is associated obviously with death, um, transcending death, mm-hmm. and not fearing death yes. at the same time. So it's all about those themes. It's it's death and understanding that you, there is nothing to fear about it. Yeah. Hence the name. It's also known for getting a song to get high to. Cause, yeah. So while they're driving... Michael Myers is driving behind them while the song is playing on the radio. Yes. So like, it's very obvious. And then I, I, I don't know if this is intentional or just like, just like fuck in fairness it. to you. I've missed it like numerous times for years until um, someone pointed. It no, out. no, no. I, I saw that immediately, but I don't know if it's like a, it's a mess up or an intentional or anything, but like he's clearly t- tailing them all throughout their drive. No, and, he's tailing them. And it's not, it's not just like, clearly he's tailing it's like it's like he's like about to ram into their fucking bumper how do they not notice this dude is they're high oh yeah and also we did forget something michael there is a young boy that Lori is babysitting his name is tommy doyle he's yes. clearly like the innocence of the movie so to yes. speak him he's, and him and Lindsay. yes Lindsay wallace um fun fact uh their names come from tommy lee doyle or not i'm sorry i cannot remember his name Tommy Lee Wallace, excuse me, yeah. who was uh, the production designer, second unit guy. Like He helped with a lot oh, of things yeah. of Halloween um, and later would direct Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Oh, yeah. You, you, see, you see that type of thing in like a lot, lot of stuff. Like mm-hmm. uh, So m- he's bullied at school um, because he went to the old Myers house, which I don't know how the fuck neighborhood kids know that. Um, he probably talked about it earlier in class. Which that's why you don't talk about these things, you little shit. Yeah, well, I mean, he's like, oh, so, I mean, they're trying to sell one the of the bullies um, says, he's going to get you, he's going to get you, the boogeyman's coming, and they break his fucking pumpkin, which is fucking rude. Yeah, that's a dick move, man. I'm like, hold, like, if I was one of the other boys, I'm that like, hold is, up, time out, you don't fuck with a kid's pumpkin. Hey, hey, that is 20 cents in 1970s money, all right? That is $10. You go back and you gave him his fucking pumpkin right yeah. now. You serious? Get on your bike and let's go. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, so, what's interesting is that one of these bullies meets Michael and is terrified of him. Um, well, so I like the kids acting in this because the kids like, aren't bad. He he runs up to this guy and he's like, "Oh, sorry," and then he looks at him. Michael grabs him and like he's not terrified, pissing his pants, but like more. What than am just, I looking at? Like more, more of like it, it's it's a difference. He hits this right note of like both scared and like shocked like oh i'm so sorry shocked surprised and like scared like oh fuck what the fuck are you because you you don't know if he's seeing his face or you're seeing the mask 
and he's just like, what, what? It's like, oh, wait, it's Halloween, so maybe I shouldn't be scared. Like, you can really see this kid, like, just going, uh, And that's what makes uh, Michael such a freaky-looking thing, is that he looks freaky. Um, so, fast-tracking back to Lori and Annie's drive. I'm sorry, I know yeah, we forgot yeah, about it's, that. it's fine. Um, we are kind of doing this out of order. I do apologize. It's fine. It's um, it's more all Everyone's seen beats. Halloween. Yeah. If you're you know? watching this, you've seen Halloween. Yeah. Um, so, one thing about uh, this is that they... they hear a sh- a an alarm going off and they're and it's annie's dad the alarm's coming from a hardware store yeah they're, they're like oh so they shit, have to hide the pot yeah. you know don't they throw it out or yeah, something they throw it out the window and they're like, sh- like, you know he yeah. saw that shit he's yeah. sorry whatever and uh you know they're explaining like, oh we're on our way to babysit and he's like uh, and she's like well what's going on oh well, you know there was a break-in earlier someone stole a halloween mask some knives and some rope yes which we never learn the rope part. Um, which I don't think it was a hardware store. I think it was more of a general store. Yeah, but. general hard. It, 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 tomatoes, tomatoes. Um, but who the fuck is having a hardware like a mass in a hardware store? So back in the day, uh, your general store hardware store types would sell Halloween costumes and shit because it was like your local like get everything type of thing. You know, like you know, like yeah, it's just it, it wouldn't be that out of the ordinary because. It was right before the explosion of, like, gas station convenience. That's true. You know? Um, so, yeah, that all kind of tracks. And, like... So, like, it's it's getting later in the day. And so, like, you literally follow this... Like I said, like, the whole thing is, like, you're following from dawn. And now it's dusk. All right? The sun is starting to go down. It's getting low. And it, we're starting to settle in. So, um... After they leave, uh, Donald Pleasance pulls up, and mm-hmm. he's like, oh, you know, I need to talk to the sheriff. And he's like, well, you're talking to him. Uh, you know, in a polite way. They're very polite. And he's like, you know, listen, I need you to base. What was it he wanted? He wanted him to, like, patrol all the streets and all. He's yeah, like, he's basically like, you need it. to get this shit locked down he's right like, now. lock down these streets. Get everyone a fucking automatic. You have a maniac on the loose. And he's, and he's like, like the what? Fuck? What? Because one dude escaped from the loony bin, and he killed one guy when he was sick. Eh, fuck off. He's, he's like, he's like, no, seriously, this guy. Like, you don't. And so he he takes him. He doesn't like. What is it? Like he's like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Why don't you go to the Myers house? Like, why don't we check out the Myers house or something later? Yeah. He's like, yeah, like come on, let's go check it out. Um, let's skip ahead a little bit here. Like Lori's babysitting. It's uh, kind of slow. They're watching the Twilight Zone. Yeah, which uh, which okay. Carpenter would later remake. Yeah, which I'm sorry, I I love Lindsay's character here. Uh, she's just a little girl, and she's like, "I do not want to do jack shit." I want to be left alone. Watch this TV and eat my popcorn. Like, why the fuck are y'all like bothering me? Like, she's ignoring her dog barking, everything. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> she's a millennial before millennials. Oh yeah, basically, she's a pr- and so um, and she's coming back in Halloween Kills too. So I want just a quick side note. I love I love these kids, Tommy and Lindsay. Like like they're like. It's kind of like the, the, they're they're getting paired up here as like a like a the, team like a team and kind of like a, like a couple of innocents like like innocent love type I don't know something I think it was like implied that. that like Tommy had a crush on yeah it's it's like they're implied that they have a crush on each other sort of but they're like um, nine yeah it's it's just something cute to kind of break up the like the like the horror that's about to happen um, I think maybe. He was going to do something later with these characters, um, and then just... Said, fuck it, this series is going down to tapes. Like, didn't. Um, fun fact. <laughs> Tommy's been... Tommy would later be uh, recast as Paul Rudd. In Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. <laughs> Which, yeah, it was the second movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so here's even something crazier. Yeah. The guy who plays Tommy now in mm-hmm. Halloween Kills mm-hmm. is the uh, nerdy kid in The Breakfast Club. Which, yeah... Uh, Perfect yeah, casting. I did see that. I was. I thought he's, he's got a like, baseball bat. He's ready to fucking. I beat Mike and Lindsay's actress. Yep. Became one of the, the one of the, the house rise of New York. Yeah, it's just yeah, but like I I think it's, it's amazing. Cute. I think I think these characters are like adorable. Um, like that, like the, these kids are acting really well. Um, Surprisingly you know, so. Like, like they're competent. Like you like when they're supposed to be scared. Or they're supposed to be like when they're supposed to feel or act a certain way, like it seems legitimate. Like she's really zoned out in front of that TV. Um, 
she's really like, you got stuck in a window. And he's like, oh, fuck, dude, something's over there. Fuck, shit. And they're like, come the fuck down. He's like, why does no one believe me? Because like, you're annoying. Shut the fuck like, up and let me watch my TV. They're, like, it's, like, they're good child actors. Um, they actually almost fight like a married couple. Yeah. Like, it's hilarious. And, like, they're, like, they're, they're, listen they're, to me, asshole. Like, and they're like sleeping in like a bed together. And it's like, it's like a one, it's your last cute moment before Myers. The horror. Um, I have to think like Gravity Falls characters were based off of them. And some, I would like, be surprised they, if there was some they, inspiration. Like, like, they had to have inspired some stuff. Because like you see this in a lot of stuff. You mm-hmm. know? Well, that, it's also just kids in general. Yeah. So, um, so, while this happens, Michael, I think... I think he stalked the wrong person by accident. Because he does kill he, Linda. He's, he's going after her. And so, he followed that car. Mm-hmm. So they're so okay. So Tommy's across the street from from uh, Lindsay. Lindsay. So right. they're both babysitting together. So they, Annie they, and yeah, uh, An- Lori. Annie and Lori are babysitting right across the street from each other. So um, Michael doesn't know this. So he goes, "Okay, well, he's there, like plot twist. He's there's the car. They're in one of these houses, probably. Me, me, my, me, yeah, he's probably in this house since it's parked on this side of the street. Okay, goes over there." German Shepherd goes out and he kills German Shepherd, which to me, all right, I love this scene because um, A, it shows how violent he is mm-hmm. and how much of a strong psychopath he is. Because if you guys don't know, like German Shepherds are police and military dogs. Like right. they're the go-to because they will take your, your, your ass down. Okay. And like, they'll, like they'll fuck you up. That and the the symbolism of him killing the dog shows that like he is predatory yes, in, in um, any way. It's not even just it's, relegated to Lori yeah, Strode. It's 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 a it's it's yeah. It's a go to of like this like you are not dealing with a human. You are dealing with an apex predator. This is actually brought up in Halloween two. In Halloween yes. two, he doesn't kill a dog. Instead, he makes the dog by seemingly looking at the dog. Mm-hmm. He makes the dog cower in fear mm-hmm. and run away. Yes, um, which, which is a lot more alpha. Yeah, he's like, me. you want to fucking like go? the dog smells the evil. He's like, I'm out, I'm out. Like, nope, nope, uh, I'm getting the fuck out. Which, I'm going to Crystal Lake. Fuck which, you. So, which brings us to the next one where they're, where, where they're um, it's got to be a different dog, right? In this next scene, I think so. Uh, because like, well, how did he kill the dog at first? I think he killed the dog later. Oh, I don't know, but so they cut to. Loomis. Oh, Loomis um, and, and the sheriff. And the sheriff, and they're in the Myers house, and they're about to explore it, and they go, wait, what, what the fuck's that over there? And... It's a dog. They don't they don't show it. At least they don't show it in the cut I watch. No, but, they don't show it, period. Um, apparently he was chowing down on a dog? So, I don't know if they say it's a dog. Or a raccoon or something. It, he was eating he was something. Killing, he killed an animal, and he ate it. Which... Is did, did horrifying. He, did he cook it? Or no, he didn't cook it. What, the fu- what, you think his shit works after like 15 years? I don't know. The gas companies forget to do shit all the time. I don't know. Um, Fun fact that Meyer's house now is a dentist's office. <laughs> I'm serious. That, that, yeah. Mm, yeah That's that, a, it's that a dentist's track. office and they use it every year. Like they have, they have, I think, a little bit of permission to be like, hey, we're from, you know, we're the original yeah. Halloween house. Yeah. So completely random, but just, just to kind of levy up the darkness here. Um, in the amazing world of Gumball, the Gumball, the, the, water, the Watersons residence is a real house on Google Maps, and it's been so popularized by traffic, they had to blur it out. <laughs> nice. So you can't look at it anymore. Unless um, if you just use an older form of Google Maps. Yeah. yeah. So this is when um, Loomis is scared by like like a critter and he pulls out like a big 357 fuck you charlie no, 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 magnet no, no. they go upstairs and he goes oh this is where he did it this is where like he first killed yeah and there's something hit the window um, right? yeah it was like a a bird no it was like either it looked kind of like a traffic light so i don't know if it's like a light fixture so or what like is, a piece of what i remember like, it's just like the wind or something that causes no it's the wind that causes the window to close no 
it's 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 like a piece of gutter or something. Oh, gets right. blown and smashes in the window, and he pulls out like the fucking peacemaker and goes. He's like, I'm ready girl? to do damage, and the sheriff's like, Whoa, whoa, he's like, whoa, he's whoa. Like, whoa. So I got a permit. He, he literally stops. He goes, Oh, I I have a permit right here, but sir. He, he, he's <laughs> so like Don Pleasance is. Such he's ready a to fucking go. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. And he's like, okay, you want to tell me exactly what we're dealing with here? And he does the amazing, amazing speech. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him. And then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Now, The Exorcist had come out in 1974, Mm -hmm. I think, right? So we're not entirely used to, like, the idea of, like, possession or anything. But it adds to a unique level of Michael that... Of, like, maybe he's... He's not human at all. Yeah, maybe he's, like, a demonic being. Something uh, is... some natural unnatural force at work mm-hmm. that is what he is that's why he he doesn't ever run no he does not scream he does not make a move like he doesn't I, even I, grunt I, when he's I, shot you hear I, him breathe like I, I i wrote i wrote this down um is that michael moves silently and almost machine like so fun fact Anytime Michael moves, it's done through a stuntman named Nick Castle, who was literally casted because he was hanging out on set. John Carpenter, he was like friends with somebody. Mm-hmm. And John noticed his interesting walk and said, hey, man, you want to be in this movie? Yeah. Like he, and he's like, hey, he, man, yeah, he, why not? He walks in a very gated way. Yes. Um, like Almost like he's gliding. Yeah, he, he glides and he's moving with absolute focus and purpose. Which is, um, and it's so funny. If you look at the behind the scenes pictures of Nick Castle, he is clearly a goofball. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. So, which brings us to like, I, I, I just want to like bring this up. Like, this is before the killings. Um, They're they're making plans to like meet up with the boys and all that and like trying to get date night going. The, the plan here is to drop off Lindsay over at Tommy's house because, hey, they want to hang out and Lori doesn't mind double babysitting. So that Annie, Annie and Linda, Linda can have double date, have weird hardcore seventies sex in some poor bastard's house. Which no, it was Linda's house. Yeah, that's that's uh, okay. So yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It, it, the sex never took place in the Wallace yeah, house. So so she gets popcorn butter on her, and so she has to get naked. Which I don't know if this was like a like we need we need more skin in this or something. It's but, the seventies. So she she has to go to the laundry room. So basically, a, a it's a fake out move. All right, to you like think Michael's there to, to get not. to get her separated. You think that this is going to be it? We're getting up to this thing where it's like it's it's teasing you with murder. Um, like it's like at any moment he's going to strike. Much like Norman Bates and Psycho which, with the shower. Yeah, which I just want to like uh, this. This has no thematic questioning at all. I just want to know why the fuck is the laundry room detached from the house? That makes no goddamn sense. One of my neighbors right down the street has a laundry room detached from their house. That's a real thing? Yeah, it's a real thing. What? When I was looking for houses, like, that was one of the things I saw. That, I wasn't looking for it. That makes no, that. It's an I, older. It, so, what it is is that, from my understanding, it's like a, it's on older houses. That, like, you don't commonly see it that were, like, maybe more, like, farmer houses and all yeah, that. Yeah, I guess, because, like, like, I guess it does add to, like, this is a very small... Rural uh, town. Yeah. Just, it was fucking weird, and I was like, what the fuck? But, Who um, designed it? So, yeah. Annie ultimately is killed by Michael in actually a very unique way. Yes, she, he is... He, he strangles her, I think, with the rope. No. So, um, what it is, is that she's, it, she's half naked, and she, it... And she um, takes Lindsay over to Tommy's house. Hanging um, out with Lori. Hanging out with Lori. Um, and they're being like cute and and, and childs and, and, you know. Mind you, we never see them trick-or-treat. Yeah, no, they, they're, they're, they're not trick-or-treating. Um, it, 
I think they might have at one point because Tommy is dressed up as a spaceman. And she's uh, like little little red riding hood or some shit. Is she? She just looked like she was like in her pajamas. <laughs> Oh, she's just like, look, dude, I just want to watch my fucking like, movie. Dude, I get just want to watch Twilight Zone. Shut the fuck up. I get lost. Like, um, I guess ain't my problem. Like, I, 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 I bring this up. No, it wasn't Twilight Zone. It was, um, it's, it's just just some fucking the thing from another world. Oh yeah, yeah, some B movie. I bring this up because like she like rushes him, uh, rushes her over. She's like struggling to hold this fucking popcorn. Like Jesus, okay, I know you got a dick appointment, but come on, I'm 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 eight. Like I'm barely I'm holding, I'm barely holding Please on. Leave me alone! I'm a little eight year old. Um, You're the one who took me away from my movie, like, asshole. Shit. Um, and Michael Myers pops up from behind the car, and there's a sound effect of of like like this like this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a like, violin string. It's like a sounds like a violin string, but to me, it sounded like air coming out of the tires. Or, like, kind of like a whistle. So he's popping up, and so all I hear is just like a slide of whistles going, whoo, whoo, <laughs> as he, as he so, comes up. First of all, that was impressive that you could do that. I couldn't. <laughs> um, but so that noise is only in like the first two Halloweens, like, and I think 2018. I'm sure it scared people before, but I. It's I, just a stinger. I started chuckling at it. I found it funny. You can hear it better on like the DVD version. I'm, sh- I'm sure it was just distorting. It's just like it's a, it's a noise that is just made. I'm when sure he's there. like the Roku version was just fucked up audio wise because it sounded like a comedic sting to me. Just a beep, whip. <laughs> so he he strangles her to death. Yeah, Does he so, strangle her or does he slit her throat? So um, what happens is so she Lindsay's over there. Yada, Annie's yada, in the yada. car, literally about Annie, ready to go. Annie goes to the car. She goes, "Oh, forgot the keys." So it's locked. I, I yeah yeah. So, so then she unlocks it, and surprise, he's in the back seat. Because after she notices that there's like fog on yeah, the she's like, "What the fuck? Why is there fog in here? What?" She's like, "Oh, whatever." And then surprise, he chokes her out. I don't mm. think he gets her with rope. It looks like he's literally holding her down with one hand, choking her out, and then he finishes her off with, I guess, a kitchen knife. Yeah, he. I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, it's hard because like, lets... it's it, again. Th- this movie is pretty bloodless. It is. It's a very bloodless movie because at the time, uh, even a movie like The Texas Chainsaw Master, which predated Halloween by five years, is pretty bloodless. Yeah. Um. Which blood to, was a very big deal back. Then. Yeah, well, a um, fake blood was very, very expensive. Like corn syrup and all that, like wasn't common enough. So like making fake blood sucked until and, Friday Thirteenth. And came also, along like Savini. you're just getting out of the sixties and fifties, where like you'd be lucky if they had like a ketchup packet of blood oh, in a movie. Hitchcock used um, chocolate syrup in Psycho. Well, that's because it was black and white, so you can get away with it. Um... So, yeah, so like that, so it's, we're 53 minutes in and we get the first official on-camera murder. Except for Judas Myers. Well, yeah, except for Judas Myers. Like, like you, you get, you, you do see the dead body of the dude, but this is like the first, like, okay, here we go. It's starting. First murder kill. time, fun time. First kill in 53 minutes into the movie. Um, and from there, it just goes, uh... What was it? Like, Linda and Bob come over? Yeah, Linda and Bob come over because they're like, oh, um, oh, okay, well, hold on. First, okay, he kills Annie, right? Right, we, we said that. Okay, and then he takes her, and we see it from Tommy's... He's car- yeah, that's right, he's carrying he's, her he's around the house. carrying her from, from the carport into the house, kind of like a bride. Yeah. Okay, and then moments later, d- Bob... I yeah, guess. showed up. Yeah, Bob, my man, Bob. Bob and uh, uh, Linda. Linda show up. Okay, seventies Bob, and he looks like every fucking like dude ever arrested in the seventies for like pedophilia ever. I'm sorry. No, I was getting like a drug trafficking. Yeah, guy. he looks like the coke dealer guy that gets arrested at the airport. We don't know who Bob is. Yeah, fuck you, Bob. So he mim- like just like Myers did. He mimics that of carrying her into the house just the same way. Mm-hmm. Like a bride. And then they proceed to fuck on the couch. <laughs> and then they go um, upstairs and which uh, he wants a beer, right? No, So they, they go up and they, they have sex. And to their credit, it's a very realistic sex scene of like, like 
couple pumps and they're done. <laughs> yeah, she's like, all right, whatever, dude. You she's know? doing her nails. And like, like, yeah, and they're like, and they're like really like jiving, like, yeah, we'll we'll do more later. All right, there's no fake, break, there's man. no fake orgasm. It's like it's very realistic. Yeah, for two teenagers in '78. Yeah, yeah. like it's a very realistic. Like, all like, right, look, dude, why don't you take a break? Which, yeah, um, which uh, side note here, like this is the Wallace house, right? No. Yes. Yeah. They're getting a raw deal here, okay? Because by the end of the day, they got teenager semen all over their house. Their dog is fucking dead, and they got three corpses all over their house and blood everywhere. They they had to burn that bitch down and collect the insurance. So Bob goes downstairs mm-hmm. um, to get a beer, and he's a gentleman. He hears a noise in the like closet, yeah, right, and also and it's a great noise. And you hear you get that stinger again. Michael just bum rushes him out of fucking nowhere, mm-hmm. lifts him up with his left hand, pulls out the knife with his and, right, and, and, and impales just, him onto just the wall. Pegs him onto the wall. And then Nick Castle. Uh-huh. Was the one who came up with the idea of the head tilt, like yeah, huh? So, I want to talk about this scene. All right, uh, this this is a beautiful scene because of how quiet it is. Mm-hmm. Like m- most most movies, it'd be a dramatic, a bunch of fucking noises and running around. You know, wow. and no, it's just a quick pickup. Boop. He's dead, not even making a noise. He's just like he kind gone. of like shook against the door, but yeah, it's like nothing as, you would think yeah, twice and, about. And he's just gone, and it's almost silent. Okay, which then except leads, for Michael's breathing through yeah, the mask. All you really hear is like a small stinger and the breathing, which leads to the next scene of Michael comes up the stairs wearing With a bed which, sheet. By the way, he takes a fucking bed sheet and makes a ghost costume. Like what the fuck? Hey, he saw Charlie Brown. I, you know, he must have seen it. Like, he must have been looking at the TV and was like, hmm. Yeah, so, and then he puts Bob's glasses If on. I remember right, it was, I think, because Bob was a ghost, wasn't he? Didn't he go downstairs as a ghost? No, he was just in bed sheets. Because they didn't want to show peen on, on... Yeah, on, that's right. Michael took the... Yeah, Michael... <laughs> this is where we kind of learned... They Michael took his to fuck p- sheets. That's <laughs> gross, dude. <laughs> Michael's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, uh whatever I, I got love to think that me. like you know this this soulless killer you know he's probably like <laughs> it's like oh i got bob ew, i'm sorry bob man look i'm sure you're yeah. a nice guy but ew <laughs> it's like oh man like, nothing against you brother like, i'm sorry so he comes nothing personal he, he comes up and then this uh, ne- this next scene i i it's it's Great, like it is truly fucking. See anything that you like? Yeah, so it's the see anything you like scene where uh, they come up the stairs and he's in a ghost sheet uh, with Bob's glasses on. Doesn't he like... actually have a case of beer? No. Okay. No, no, no. no. I thought he did. Maybe I'm D- misremembering. No, 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 no. Um, and he's just standing there in the doorway, and all you can hear is him breathing. Just ah. Uh, uh, you know? He's out of breath because my man Bob put up a fight. Yeah, it's um, like fuck. Oh god, I'm in, I'm in weird sheets. Yeah, pretty much, and it's silent. And he's like, it's it really hot cuts, in this man. It just cuts back to her, like, "Where's my beer, <laughs> honey?" And then she shows her tits because, I mean, you have to sell tickets. So, so. fun fact about that behind the scenes: John yeah, Carpenter was was like super shy about. It. He's like, "Listen, you don't have to do it if you don't want to." She's like, "John." Yeah, I'll I'm, do it. Relax. So, like, basically, this is like the 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 most lewd of the nudity in this movie, and it's it's that's why it's so crazy because he was so shy about. But like it. Th- that, and like most horror movies, it's like blood and tits, blood and tits. That's right. Thirteenth, yeah. This one, like the nudity, it it feels natural. Yeah. To like a story or event, like. Okay, like he like he gets his sister when she's naked because she's vulnerable. She's naked. She's not expecting him. She's shocked, so he surprise attacks her, kills her. All right, that's how that's how a six year old kills his sister who's ten years his his senior. All right, uh, uh, you get this other girl and this other guy. How do you get two and one? They're naked. They're 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 just they've had sex, so they're they're. At their most relaxed, and then bam, you you get them. You know, it's it's genius how every kill has like a logical step to it. 
Uh, Too it, bad it, you'll never get this in any of the sequels. Oh yeah, no, it's it's just it's slasher tits and blood after that for money for money because Carpenter was like eh take it I don't oh I got a story about that which uh, I'll, I'll add in here about two um so so like boom right away you go from 50, 50 minutes of basically just walk watching a teenage girl live out a day to bam. Now there's a serial killer out on the loose. Murder time, fun and, time. And shit is fucked. There is a th- three-body kill count now. Um, Michael's like, those are rookie numbers. Those are rookie fucking oh, yeah. numbers. <laughs> Jason would have had like a thousand. Jason would be like, you're on three? Like, I'm on 12. He's like, dude, like I've killed like half a Freddy's camp by like, now. Freddy's like, you two shit bags don't know a goddamn thing. All right. So, um, so like, yeah, like, which... Okay, well, we skipped this, but I kind of want to talk about this. Um, like earlier, like there, Loomis is walking around earlier. Um, oh yeah, and he sees these kids at the Myers house. And he's like, "Well, I gotta get them the fuck away from here." She was like, "Hey, Paul, get your ass away from there!" Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there! Hey, hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there! And they go, "Oh fuck, ghosts!" They fucking beautiful. Beautiful. So he's like, well, what am I going to do? Shoot him? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. Sam, put down the gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Basically, yeah. He's like, I'm um, just, in the later sequels, Dr. Loomis is a fucking lunatic, and he probably would have done something like that because he's a fucking asshole in the sequels. Yeah. Um. And j- just to kind of go back to the, the Bob killing, Michael probably can't see shit through those glasses, right? Probably not, no. Yeah. Um, so he probably, like, that's probably why he's out of breath. He's like, he bumped he's into like, like 16 oh, things. Fuck, my eyes hurt. He's like, oh, <laughs> god damn it. Ow, shit. Ow, fuck. I'm going to get the shit off so, my door. So we're cutting back now, and then, um, so she tries to call, uh, Lori mm-hmm. for help. And of course, it sounds like she's getting strangled by, uh, from the, from the telephone wire, which, if anyone's grown up with an older brother, you know this bullshit can't be done. <laughs> uh, people have tried and failed. Uh, <laughs> but, it, of course, it sounds like they're having sex over the phone, which, yeah. Um, and Lori's like, ha ha, very funny. Is, is, is she, and she's like, wait, wait, are you in trouble? or are, are you fucking or are you in trouble here? And so she's like, okay. But Michael hears her. And he's like... He's, like, he's just breathing. Mm. So, so she goes, okay, well, Tommy saw a boogeyman, and that doesn't sound right, so... I'm going next door. Yeah, I'm going next door. So like she you go- two kids, so, stay here. So she goes over there, she, she, she puts the kids to bed, the last moment of, like, purity we see, because shit is... Don't gonna- get real, Michael's just yeah. like... Finally, shit, man. Jason's yeah. making fun. Basically, of- he's inserting her into a trap. Yeah. Um, kind of accidentally, but kind of on purpose too. Yeah, he's like, this works for me. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I failed upwards. <laughs> he's like, hey, I fucked up. Cool. Suck it, Jason. Um. So Lori finally comes over, uh, and she walks up into the bedroom, and you see, um, I want to say Linda, Annie. It's Annie. Okay, I I, I got it's the, Annie um, in on, a Christ like, pose on the bed with Judith Myers' tombstone. Yeah, in, at the in, head. in in the in, in the Christ pose, which little much there, my Myers. All right, little I mean, much. Just, so I don't know if like what the symbolism is there with it. Uh, if um, anything, I think it's just how he plopped her onto the bed. Yeah, I think it's just it's just the, it's just thematics. Probably it might mean something to Michael. It might mean something to the movie. It's probably just like hey, this is pretty good. Way to frame a corpse. Fuck it. I was like, all right, you know what? I've had a long night of carrying shit. Carpenter was probably like, eh, this shot will look cool. Yeah, pretty much. He's like, this Um, shot looks money. I'm not not smart enough. I don't know what a chain-smoking, perpetually 90-year-old man thinks. Who's cool as shit. Which, didn't you sell him a desk at your old job? I thought I did. So, (laughs) just real quick. I worked at an office supply store, and I swear to God, there was this guy who, if it, it... his, he told me his name was John. And he was a musician. And I'm sitting there thinking the entire time, are you fucking John Carpenter? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't him. I don't remember how I figured out, but it wasn't him. Yeah. But I'm sitting there thinking like, but like he, it looked like him. It sounded like him. He, he smoked. Do, he does like live around here sometimes. Okay. No, you're thinking of Tom Savini. Um, yeah. 
I met Tom Savini down, downtown once. Yeah, he was just like the most chill dude ever. Yeah, I was like, are you Tom Savini? He's like, yes, I am. I'm like, okay, good day, sir. He's like, yes, I am. Cool. <laughs> I saw Tom Atkins, yeah, yeah. who's in Halloween 3. I saw Jeff Gold. Did I ever tell you the time I met Jeff Goldblum? We'll talk about that later. <laughs> just... Uh, just we're getting back to Michael Myers. Yeah, so Michael yes, Myers. I was I was convinced for like a whole summer that I sold John Carpenter a a computer desk, <laughs> and I don't think I did. So okay, um, if I did, Mister Carpenter, I hope you're enjoying. It. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know, man. Um, <laughs> uh, man, it's late. We're tired. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, so hey, we're, we're we're in we're in the end game now. All right, we're in the end game. So now, Stark, Lori walks in up to this bedroom and she sees her friend dead on the bed and then she like looks over and I don't I don't know if like he's pulling a string or something but like she opens up a closet and there's her other friend just swinging down like a fucking that's probably where he got the rope from yeah he probably was like I learned this in arts and crafts in the insane asylum <laughs> yeah or something and then she she backs up and then the closet and Bob's like what's up Lori yeah, yeah and he's stuffed in there which like d- damn you just so stuffed them we have in like an implication in this movie that Michael is incredibly strong yes he so, for so, a mental patient so for someone who probably gets no gym time. Ain't working out. Working on his delts. Yeah, or something. He is inhumanly strong and resilient. Um, Which we're going to see in the finale. Yeah, like, in, so, like, she fucking books it. She is losing her mind. Her, you Doesn't can, she finally meet him, too? Yes. Um. So, like, she's freaked the fuck out, okay? As any natural and, person like, would. And, like, she sees, like, like, she's looking at her friends, and she's like, this is not fucking real. And then, like a ghost appearing out of the darkness you see just this white mask mm-hmm. and that's all you see i don't know how the fuck they lit this but damn they um, use some type of reflective light on him like the I, lighting the lighting in this movie is second to none i have not john seen carpenter anything play with shadows so perfectly as this especially for something that you're supposed to you're supposed to get middle America or East Coasty lighting, and you're doing it in California, which is damn impressive. Okay, because like you don't think for uh, what you do uh, if you're us, and you know what middle and East Coast looks like, but if you don't know what Illinois looks like. This is fucking Illinois, you know. And Carpenter was from Illinois too, wasn't he? Probably. But anyway, yeah. So he. So he, she uh, she runs she job. runs over. She, she's pounding on this fucking door. Like, Tommy, let me the fuck in. So before that, though, she ran to neighbors. And none of these people Oh, yeah. To help. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that. She is screaming bloody murder. And nobody's answering the door. No one's turning on their light. It's only got to be 10. They're like, whatever, you crazy drug out like, lunatic. Here's the thing. You're telling me it's a ghost town on Halloween. The most busy, like, nightlife night of the year. You actually got me thinking too. Um like where is everybody? Back just to recap, we missed something with the with the Myers house. Yeah, okay. Loomis saying death has come to your little town sheriff and he goes and the sheriff goes families, children, all lined up in rows up and down these streets. And you mean to tell me they're in for a slaughterhouse? Yeah. That build up of Michael to this scene is mm-hmm. amazing. Yes. I'm so sorry that we got out of order a little bit. Yeah. Like, like he said, we're tired. I smell. I'll, we'll have a more structured for the next one. Well, this, this was impromptu. We were doing other stuff, and, and then uh, failed. His, his technology decided to say "fuck you, fuck your mother," and uh, go fuck herself. So we're doing this. Uh, I was I was gonna like, yeah, it's fine. Um, so yeah, she's running over. She throws a flower at the window, and Tommy's like looking at like, bitch, what? bitch, what the fuck? It's like, don't you have a key? It's like, no. It's like, why don't you bring a key? Just Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> he's like, shit, um, man. I was, gonna, I was eating animal crackers. The fuck you want? So, like, he sleepily comes down, and this is kind of a good moment for Michael because you, he does not run. He does not even jock. He is just kind of like striding. La di da da da. He's just forcibly step, step, Step like he he's almost he, walking as if a human had never walked before. Yes, he's walking, kind of like a demon, possessing a meat puppet. I think that's the point. Like, like you're not supposed to be fully aware of, is this a human 
even because you never really see his face. You don't see much of his body. He's in like a like a black bullet. jumpsuit. Yeah. So like, and I think he's got gloves on. No. No. Um, no gloves. Yeah, no. Well, he's got very pale hands then. Yeah, it's just a, it's a baggy jumpsuit. Yeah. So yeah. Um. No, he's never worn gloves in any of the films. So like, this slow moving force of nature because that's what he is he's a slow moving force of nature john carpenter equated him to jaws yeah he is he's he's just like a shark coming at you taking its time it knows it's got your ass all right you're just gonna die tired if you run tommy finally opens up the door she slams it locks it which okay it's both guys who know a thing or two about doors that's a pitiful ass door that was a weak sauce door. Like, like that's a little baby bitch latch. But again, it's the seventies. Helter Those are Sk- fucking rookie numbers, man. Like, like Helter Skelter type shit hadn't hit metal like small. Helter town Skelter America. happened in nineteen sixty nine. Well, like, yeah, like it it happened, but like people still weren't super aware of serial killers and shit yet. Right, like they right. were just kind of getting used to that happening in your town, not just Holly Weird. So. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a small town where people barely lock their doors. Um, she tries immediately call the police, which smart something that people don't do anymore. It's just, remember, kids, if a lunatic in a mask comes up to you, just call nine one one. Don't even fucking yeah, don't even, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, him be, in the nuts and then call nine one one. Be prepared to fight back, but call nine one one. And him in the nuts, always him in the nuts. Yeah, unless so, that fucker's wearing a cup. Then you drop kick him and do a spinning fly kick. So she calls. And of course, he's already cut the line somehow. I he probably just cut whatever the phone line. Um, don't know how he knows how to do that, but whatever. I mean, Jason knows how to do it. He's got the how, brain of a fucking fly. I, I want to see them just, just one of them having like a phone operating manual, or something, <laughs> something that lets them like, know. Like, like Michael's like, like mm-hmm. you, you right here, you, read it. You, like you cut this and you're good. Like, Jason's like, oh. Okay. Um, Bookmark that page. So, sh- was that a smartphone? So he Google's he how to do it. he bashes in the door. The kids are upstairs. They're like locked in a bedroom. He's, she's like, "Fucking stay up there. Stay safe. Like bolt yourself down." She takes a, what, a, knee, a, knitting, a knitting needle. Knitting needle. Yeah, and like stabs him in the neck. Which, if you pay attention, I'm pretty sure it's 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 the major vein she hits. Yes. He hits. He doesn't scream. He just goes, Ur! like just like a, ah. Damn. Like, oh shit. That actually kind of hurt. <laughs> Fuck. Kind of like It's like if you got pinched. Yeah. Like that. Like ah, you know, like just a, not that actually hurt you, you pussy. You get sharp nails. Shit, you cut the skin, asshole. Fuck. Seriously? No. Oh, you got me excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're a monster. Um, so <laughs> um, she stabs him in the neck and he drops like a sack of potatoes. I'm sorry. This was comical. He's like, uh <laughs> he's pretty much just like up oh, well you popped me game over like and i had one life up, and she's like oh yeah i killed him i killed the boogeyman it's like no nah, kill the boogeyman so but okay <laughs> actually wait hold up pause rewind doing that again okay she stabs him with one she has the other one she doesn't check that he's dead she she goes eh. she's 18 she don't know a double tap she, she she's like eh, i got him she throws away her other weapon which is a knife. Okay. Which is like a, a another knitting needle or something. No, it was a kitchen knife. It was a kitchen... Something. She throws away the knife, okay? Runs upstairs to the kids. Goes, oh, yeah, it's all over. We're going to call the police. You're going to run down to the so-and-so. And, In Mackenzie's house. Yeah. Um, And you could see from the shadows. I don't know, maybe it wasn't intentional for, for our cut, but big TV. He's walking up the steps. Nope, you, you're supposed to see that slowly. Yeah. Okay, so he's slowly walking up the steps like a force. And Tommy, of course, goes, oh, shit, dude. Yo, right behind you. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you better no-scope his ass. So, you know, you know, they run. She goes, she hides in the closet. She's smart. She opens up the window like she jumped out the window, goes, hides in the closet. And he does look out the window briefly. He's like, you motherfucker. He's, he's like, nah, closet. Nah, hold up. Wait a minute. Breaks up the closet. And she's she gets a metal again. She is she gets fighting, a wire hanger. She is fighting back. At no point does she stop fighting, which no. is smart. And I just I kind of laughed at this because like she jangles around and hits this light switch. So okay, 
the way it worked was that he hit a louvered door. Mm-hmm. Those doors are actually really kind of light. They're, now, the light switch was actually kind of a gag. Or yeah. not a gag, but a little bit of a goof, kind yeah. of. Um, I think it was supposed to be that the light was supposed to be on. Mm-hmm. But Jamie Jamie forgot to turn it on or something when she got in there. Yeah. So uh, Tommy Lee Wallace is actually wearing the Michael mask in that scene because he knew where to punch it because mm-hmm. he made the door. Mm-hmm. And uh, he quickly, like, he's struggling, but he quickly turns on the light like, oh, there we go, John. Yeah, go, I kind of I kind of laughed at that. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But I was like, like okay, well, you can rationalize. Like, My brain was like, well, clearly can't see. that light was supposed to be on, clearly, but... Uh, that's why I think I, I do know it's timely wall. But then again, it's, it makes sense that she's hiding in the dark. And then he's like, but where the fuck are you, bitch? Here, let's get some light. So yeah, I can he, he does move around like, God damn it. You know what? I'm tired yeah, of your yeah, shit. You know, it makes sense. But it's kind of funny. It's it's funny. He has a weird sense of humor a little bit. Yeah. Um, like wearing Bob's sheet and yeah. just sticking around. It's like he has a field. dark sense of humor. Like, this is funny to him. Yeah. Like, this is a like, to him, he's a six-year-old and this is all the game. I never thought of that. Like, yeah, he's at, he's still in that six year old mentality of "Wee, this is fun. I get yeah. to murder you." Yeah. Um. So she pokes his eye out, which, which that shit's got to hurt. Yeah. He even like, does. Oh like, fuck! He's like, oh. like, drops the he's knife. Like, okay, I gotta lay down. And she drops that, picks up the knife, stabs his ass. Yep. Which, pro tip: if someone's trying to murder you, don't hit them till they're down. Hit them till they can't get back up again ever. Yep. Actually, Friday Thirteenth Part Four learned that lesson. Yeah, they hit him with a machete. He falls down. You're like, oh, no, 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 fuck that. You going to die, bitch? <laughs> You're like, make sure he can't get back up. Fuck you, Jason. <laughs> um, yeah, they did she Jason stabs dirty. him. He drops down. He's like, oh, that clearly killed him. Um, Meanwhile, while the kids ran out, Doctor Loomis was want was just co- casing the streets yeah, of Haddonfield yeah. looking for him. He's like, he's oh, like, screaming children. Clearly, this is the way. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out that piece, man. <laughs> he's like, I'm fucking. He's like, I got it. six shots for your ass, dude. Technically seven, but we're gonna get into that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, uh, <laughs> she again. Drops the knife. This is like, like, bitch, don't drop your weapon. She also got stabbed in the arm. Yeah, well, him. yeah, well, it's just like this little, like, like. It's supposed to be a big cut, though. Yeah, but it's like just again very bloodless. Like I noticed on the arm, like it's kind of like she spilled some ketchup on herself, really. Um, but yeah, she fought, fought back. Um, knife is bloodless as it comes out, which. Again, bloodless. It's a what if he doesn't have blood? Yeah, maybe he's just some smoke monster thing, you know, but whatever. <laughs> so then this brings us to, like, the greatest movie ending of all time. Mm-hmm. This is why I'm kind of slowly ramping at the end rather than skipping most of the middle. Who gives a fuck? It's the ending that's good. Loomis comes in. Before that. Mm-hmm. He gets up. Yeah, he gets. She's, she's walking away. He, yeah. It's a faraway shot. He gets up. In humanly. Like, and looks at her, like, quickly. Like, like at first he looks at the wall, yeah. and he just quickly turns his head. Which, like, I'm suppressed. This guy's got core. Because mm. you, he's not using his hands to push himself up. He's just up. Yeah. You know? Like, as if he hit the, th- like, the recline on a chair. Just like, f- woo! up. You know? Which I bet you he probably got the inspiration from a recliner when he was a kid. Like, yeah. I'm gonna get up like this. Yeah. Um... um but yeah, so he gets up and they struggle. Yep. But she rips off his mask. You said you couldn't see his face. Yeah. You can. So when you see his face, you see his eye is damaged, but he looks like just a normal person. Really? He look yeah. He's not deformed like Jason. He's not, you know, scarred or monstrous like yeah. the other face. He just he looks like an average normal man. Well, see, it's it all goes back to kind of like I mean, Bundy was Ted, Ted Bundy was caught, like, around this time, but... Ted Bundy was caught, yeah, he was caught around that time. But, like, clearly they, they they didn't write this, but, like, that's... I think that's why people like Ted Bundy so much versus all these other guys, because he looks like an everyday dude. There's nothing about him that goes... So, yep, they casted a, a guy, guy solely on his looks. He was, like, this this good-looking guy, quote-unquote. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he plays Michael in two scenes. Mm-hmm. When he escapes mental institution, because you can see it's the same face, he yep. just looks like a normal person. And then this scene, I think his name is Tony, or is, to, is Tony Moran? I could be wrong. Yeah, then I think he could do a little bit of stunt work. I think he did, like, tiny bit of stunts. If it's Tony Moran, he did Because, like, stunts. he jumped on that car good. 
I, yeah. I would have tweaked my ankle doing that. Um, um, but yeah, so he he just looks like a normal person. And according to John Carpenter, the idea was they wanted him to look angelic, almost like he was just a, a normal boy next door. Yeah, type like from person. like the little glimpses of him, I could see he, he did just look like a normal, thin, twenty-something-year-old dude. You know, mm-hmm. like nothing. Like he didn't look hideous or nothing. Yep, Tony Moran. Yep, okay, Michael Myers, cool. age twenty-three. So. Loomis has got his god maker, you know? <laughs> and he shoots at him. Yeah, he So shoots. he's already fired one shot. I think he does hit him once. He hits him. I, I think it's presumed that he was supposed to hit him, or either he hit him or he sh- uh, like it grazed Michael somewhere. Yeah, like, he's clearly like, oh, fuck, that hurt. I, oh, okay, shit, this got real. Hey, wait a minute, time out, time out, time and out, time out. he shoots him out the He shoots the him six times, yeah. but technically seven. Technically, well, I mean, movie... Me- I've, well, there's no such listen, thing as un, as limited ammo in movies. I, I will show you a movie where a man has a revolver and he shoots like a hundred shots. Okay, I Rambo. I can, I can show you that movie. Okay, um, falls out backwards, crashes onto the onto the ground, and you think, oh, finally, the monster is dead. Because again, it's like that's a human. That's dead. That's dead. Right? You don't you don't live from that. Mind you, he's he shoots him six times, and Michael stumbles back. You're presuming he's hitting him in the chest. Yeah, he's aiming dead ass across the Cause room. Because Loomis don't bam, miss. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, and Michael the whole time is like, uh, 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 and he falls off. Um, he falls off a third story balcony. Second or third, yeah, but that's like that's a fall. That's yeah. a deep fall. So the the whole the the the, the rule Back first. The the rule is suicide starts at three. That's like that's the rule. Yeah, the like death starts at the third story. Um, that's that's the, we have a velocity and there's only so far. I mean, technically you can fall and die from a, like a six foot ladder if you fall wrong. But yeah, like he's 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 going onto his back. He should be dead, mm-hmm. or at the le- very least unable to move. But of course, he goes. Yes, I've killed the demon. I've, you know, was that the boogeyman? Yeah, is what Laurie asked him. He was. He goes, I, yeah. As a matter of fact, it was. It was. Looks over. Michael's just ghosting. He's, just, he's going. He's like, "Fuck this! I'm out." He's like, "I'm going home. Fuck you. You're Which, mean." I, I I like the Boondocks version later, where where it's the parody of that. And it's like this kid. He's like, "I like to do bad things," and like he falls out the window. He's like, there, I've killed the kid. He's like, no, he's not dead. Dude, look, he's limping. The fat kid's just like, uh, uh, he's limping away. He's like, get back here. He's like, hey, I still got six more shots for your ass. <laughs> I'm just picturing Dr. Loomis, like, a limping Michael, like, oh my God, I'm sorry, I surrendered. <laughs> he's like, fuck. He's like, I'm going to fucking go, I'm going to um, end you right now. And then it gives you the best ending ever, where it's just Lori, and she's like, oh, fuck. And then it just pans to just dark rooms. Shadowy rooms, shadowy neighborhoods, you know? Everywhere like, he's been. Everywhere he's been, everywhere he could still be. He's out there, you don't know where he is, and he's just going to be a Phantom of the Night forever for you. Until 1981. Well, until technically 2018, but okay. Yeah. Because... Yes, so... None of them stated, are canon after one. So, no. here's how the, cano- the canonicalness works. There's, there's like, four different universes. There is two. Nope. nope. There's, like, four different universes. Okay. I'll go over them real quick. All right. Halloween, Halloween 2. Mm-hmm. Those two, some people, that's it. Like, that's it. There's nothing more. He died at the end of two. He got mm-hmm. burnt up. Cool. Okay. Halloween 3 is its own thing. Silver, Shamrock... And like it has no like any basically to basically anything. they wanted a movie that they said this is a good script but it won't sell so they slapped the name on it kind of yes kind of but they want Halloween to be an anthology series yes. Halloween became a huge hit um, so they kept with Michael yeah even though John didn't want Michael yeah he, he John wa- wanted to move away from Michael he wanted to do other stuff kind of like so that, that's why you see stuff like. Uh, uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology video games, which we should be continuing on the channel soon, where it's, it's the same universe, sort of, but it's different stories taking place on different people at different times. As long as I never have to play as Rami Malek again, I'm no. okay. Yeah, no. It, it's, it's alright. Um, nothing against him, it just <laughs> dude's freaky looking. Yeah, he's a little scary looking. He's intimidating. Yeah. Too bad at new James Bond movies that he's in is going to suck. Yeah. Well, whatever. Um, so then there's there's Halloween, Halloween 2, mm-hmm. Halloween H2O. Mm-hmm. 
But before that, there was Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 4, Halloween 5, Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers. That was it. So we're already at, what, what? That's four universes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then there's Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween H2O, Halloween Resurrection. That's five universes. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Then there's the Rob Zombie movies. They're obviously their own thing. And then... You ready for this? Okay. Halloween. Halloween 2018. Mm -hmm. Halloween kills and Halloween ends. Oh, they're already telling you that there's going to be two more. Yes. There's a new one coming out and there's one more. And this cocksucker is supposed to be dead after that. (laughs) Except he won't because, you know, money. Yeah, well, I mean, no. Then they're just rebooted again. Yes. He'll never. Just send him to space. (laughs) Right. Fuck it, word for Jason. So listen, unironically, Jason X is my favorite of the Friday movies. It's in my top five. Yeah, it's yeah. Like if you ooh, were, to- oh, we should do a ranking at some point. That's I can do it right now. No, that's okay. going to be its own thing. So we'll do that like maybe in the summertime because because <laughs> oh my god, Jason X, as insane as that movie is, I want Michael in space. Mm-hmm. Is Halloween work in space? I don't know. No, fuck you. But I mean, whatever. Hey, the leprechaun could go to the hood, so... And went to space. It did, I fucking and Pinhead did. went to space. Who? Pinhead. Hellraiser. Oh, well, the Hellraiser doesn't give a... Sh- that, that I transcend... Listen, they take a script and they go, this is kind of crappy. What if we put Hellraiser in this scene and this scene? Okay, Hellraiser movie. That's how Hellraiser's um, work. But yeah, so so Halloween 2 was, was a hit. And then the problem with Halloween 2 is that it ruins the first movie. Yes, because now they're uh, they're related. They're related, which I could see that working. They just let him kill her. Yeah, if that's what he wants, let him. I'm yeah. sorry. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Who is this person? Yep, yeah. she's not important. No, just let him fucking ice her. Yeah, but then he'll just find someone else to kill. Do we know that? Honestly, do we know that, Steve? I, I've, Does, yeah, do yeah. we know that Michael Myers once he ices his family, maybe he just goes home. Maybe he just fucks off. Because you know what? That's what happened. Yeah. Halloween Resurrection. He finally kills Lori. Okay? Uh-huh. And he lit- you know what he does? He literally goes home. And that was kind of it. Till Buster Rhymes came in and fucked with his house. Huh. That's literally the plot. Weird. Doesn't, it's literally the plot. Doesn't make this, sense. This motherfucker went back home and was like, I'm just going to chill. Who the fuck is in my house? <laughs> He's like, what the? Oh, like, who, why is my house still standing, first of all? But who the fuck is in my house? Like, I can't believe they didn't burn this bitch down. Shit. I mean, it is not up to code. Damn. Like, wow, I really got to get work on this shit. I got to fix the pipe. Like, I got to go to Home Depot right now. <laughs> Damn. We are sponsored by Home Depot. <laughs> Um, Michael Myers. Do you think he's a Lowe's guy or a Home Depot guy? Oh, he. Uh, you know what? He's a Harvard Freight man. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, if you know who Jason is? Ace Hardware. Oh, yeah, yeah. You Jason's like, I gotta go to Ace. Yep. Yeah. Ace is the place for him, man. You know why? Shetties are always on sale. Leatherface. Where do you think he goes? Oh, he is. He is a mom and pop guy. You think so? You he, think he, he supports he, local? He, yeah, he supports local. Well, Fred. Fred. Freddy. Um, Think about it. Freddy's the biggest dick of them all. Who's got the best garden section? It's like, mm, who's got the best garden section? Oh, I'm sure he goes to one of them garden places. No, no, no. Because no. remember, he wasn't a gardener. Okay? His gloves were, were made of, like, copper plating and razor blades. Oh, were they purposely there to... Mur- they were he just- literally made it to kill kids. So they weren't hedge no. thingies. No. No. He, he made a, a murder glove. Yes. I thought they were just That's the remake. Thing- oh, okay. I swear, I, well, maybe it's because of uh, I, I'm more familiar with the Simpsons parody. Oh, yeah, with, uh, with Groundskeeper Willie. But um, yeah. <laughs> in all seriousness, um, do you want me to talk about Halloween 2? Like, no. The production of it? Uh, At least. Fuck like, it. Why how not? it got to it. All right, so there was a gentleman mm-hmm. named Mustafa Akkad. Okay. Who loved Halloween. Y- y- he well, wanted to make yeah. like a bajillion of them. Yeah, okay. Mustafa, real quick, he bobbed the rights, and he's like, okay, we're going to make a Halloween 2. John Carpenter's like, okay, cool. Uh, can we do, like, something different? No, fuck you. We're going to bring Matt Michael. Okay. And he's like, I mean, I, John Carpenter was like, I don't know what the hell to do with him. Like, I, I, he was also suffering from alcoholism at the time. So John, while drunk, came up with the idea of Laurie and Michael being related. And even back then, he was like, this is stupid. So the thing is, is that... um. He could have made it work better if it if, if 
he could have made it work better. If it was um, implied in the first movie. Yes. Which it's um, never implied. So, I mean, honestly, two would have worked better if in one, Lori wasn't just like some neighbor. If she was like the Myers had a kid after that, you know, and it was nope. just like she's a baby when he commits the murder. Yeah, or something. Which is so weird, because I'm like, how the fuck do you even know who this... So, like, she apparently visited him at some point. Yeah. And that's when he learned who she was. But I'm like, how the fuck... Like, how the fuck do you know who that is uh, ten years later? Yeah. Fuck you, movie. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got problems with two. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll do two at some point. Real quick, though, uh, we got, like, an ass ton of sequels out of Halloween that, that dived into... Fuck you, Fly. Is that the same fly I tried yeah. to murder earlier? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm going to flush yep. you. I'm going to super glue the toilet. <laughs> and I'm going to flush you into like a gluey hell. <laughs> Do I look like I'm joking? No. I've done it. <laughs> so what you do is like once you get it in there, right? Mm-hmm. You pour in a little bit of super glue. Mm-hmm. And it like kind of like creates like a crystallized form. You could just flush it. Mm. And it gets stuck in there like a net. Mm-hmm. And they like probably choke on the glue. Oh, shit, it killed itself. Good. <laughs> it's like, I've heard this evil plan. has Smashed somebody its face in the damn wall and died. It's like, oh, God, I don't want to die that way. I'm going on my own terms. Um. Okay, so, yeah, we have, like, uh, so... So, next time we're going to talk about Halloween 2018. Um. We are either going to talk about 2018 or... Two. No, three. Okay. Uh, Fuck it, do both. We will probably... I think I have three. We will probably save two and the other ones for... Some other time. Later. Because there's so much shit behind those movies. We're, de- we're definitely going to talk about other stuff. Probably more Carpenter movies, really. Yeah. Um, And also, real quick, John, do you know what John's relationship was with Halloween for years? Um, It's that thing he made, and he's kind of a, tired of everyone talking about it. Yes. But not anymore. Now he loves it. Yeah, I mean, I have seen... So, like, John said... He always said, like, I don't hate Halloween. I hate it way it became. I yeah. made my piece with those movies a long time ago, and he he distanced himself for years from Halloween. Well, it's because it's like, he made this great thing. So, it's it's this happens a lot when people, like, go, okay, I, I, made, I made this pizza. Uh, you guys can put your own toppings on it, but I made this pepperoni pizza... And then he, you come back later and it's like, what the fuck? Why'd you put anchovies and, and fucking candy corn on this bitch? What the fuck? Who said could. you could do that? Because I could and money. And it's like, well, I'm already eating it, so what you gonna do about it? And, yeah. Boy, you should watch Halloween 6 sometime. There's a sixth one. There's a seventh one, an eighth one, two remakes, and then whoa, another Whoa, 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 whoa. There's an eighth before the remakes. Yeah. Halloween Resurrection. Okay. I always knew it was one, two, three, H2O. Oh, Jesus. And, and, and four. And then I thought the remakes counted as, as six what? and seven. Okay, no. Fuck you. Halloween. Halloween two. Halloween, the cur- or Halloween excuse me, the season of the witch. Uh-huh. Halloween three. Um, so that's already three movies, okay? Mm-hmm. Halloween four, the return of Michael Myers. Halloween five, the revenge of Michael Myers. Who's the game of revenge on? I don't know. Nobody knows. Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers as it was never officially named. De- slash Halloween 6, the origin of Michael Myers. There's it depends a on the cut. Yeah, yeah. Which apparently Which, is better? Not really. Eh. It's fucked up. Um, and then there's Halloween H2O slash Halloween 20. That's the seventh movie. So I always thought H2O was the fourth movie and then they were done. Where the fuck did you get the idea it was I the fourth think, movie? I think I'm basing this solely off of these, TV? These are the ones that they aired on TV because the other ones were garbage. <laughs> no, dude, they aired six a lot. Um, and then there's there's Halloween Resurrection, which is eight. Mm-hmm. So eight movies. Okay. And then they were like, wow, these movies have gotten so fucking terrible. Let's just have Rob Zombie fucking redo it. And then those yeah. movies were terrible. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, Carpenter. All right, look, we're going to get the guy who made Vice Principals to fucking... Oh my God! We that's got Danny right. McBride to Danny write. McBri- and you know what? And he did a good job. And he's like, you know what? I got an idea for you. Okay, what's that? We we are gonna remove them being siblings. First of all, it's like we're gonna just ignore Kenny Powers. All of these. <laughs> Kenny Powers just walks in. He's like, we're not doing any of this shit anymore. Buster Rhymes <laughs> didn't happen. 
That's just, no, fuck you. New canon. <laughs> We're just going to ignore it. She's been traumatized for years. And is now like, you know what? I'm ready for your We're going We're going to rob Paul Rudd of his MTV award. He wanted to come back. So he wanted to come back as as Tommy, but he couldn't because he was doing uh, Ant Man. Oh, also, it's hard to say that twenty years has passed when he looks the sick. Like Paul Rudd has not aged in thirty five years. No, he he is some sort of weird immortal deity, and I'm sure he's like one like one day he's gonna just walk out of his house and he's gonna be like a ninety five year old man, and we're gonna go what the fuck. What happened to you? Uh, um, it's, same with Ryan it's, Reynolds. It's kind, it's kind of, yeah, well, yeah, it's same. But it's kind of like the reverse of our boy John Carpenter here, where he's looked like an 80-year-old man for about 40 years now. There was 1978 Carpenter, and then there's now. I mean, wasn't he in, like, um, didn't he host some sort of horror movie, like a freak show type thing? Yes, Creep Show. Creep Show, that's it, yes. Mm-hmm. He was the host and of And Creep that. Show, too. Right, we should do those at some point. Never seen them. Mm, yeah, me neither. All right, well, um, you have any final closing thoughts on the birth of Michael Myers? Um, I think that this movie uh, was very important for not only like horror, um, but like this, like it, it was kind of the birth of slashers, sort of. Um, yes, that is the appropriate. It's been considered the Godfather of slashers. Um, yeah, because. It and Friday Thirteenth were really the first two big ones. Yeah, I mean, like Texas. There were other ones like, like Peeping Tom, Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, well, the I mean, Town of Dread, te- Sundown. Te- te- Texas Chainsaw Massacre wasn't really a slasher in in the sense of 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 a knife wielding person of, of a knife wielding maniac coming to your town. It's you idiots picked him up. Like like you fucked up and walked in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> Of Appalachia, you know, <laughs> um, which I mean, to be fair, uh, th- 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 there are still like places where like even EMS will not go because it's like hillbilly like deliverance places. So if Ed Gein yeah, somehow, yeah, no, it's, it, it's like some it's it's like it's like the Sawyer family farms are real places out there in America. Yeah, so just avoid that shit and yeah. avoid anyone in a white mask. Yeah, um, so like it. It birthed this actual, like, it kind of brought Halloween as a holiday back onto the map. Because, um, I mean, like, Halloween wasn't really celebrated in, like, the 50s and 60s. And it sort of had, like, it a... It was. It wasn't super... It wasn't scary. Yeah, it until was... Until Michael came. Like, it 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 lost its Sam Hain wheat... Uh, sewing. Uh, sewing. Um... Uh, roots um and it, this kind of brought back the idea of like no like you should be fucking afraid because it also kind of like it's appropriate that it's halloween and that he's wearing a mask so do you know why a, the movie is set on halloween um to get away with the fact that he's wearing a mask no so the original idea was called the babysitter murders mm-hmm. the babysitter murders are supposed to take place over a series of nights mm-hmm Problem was, John Carpenter didn't have a whole lot of money. So, he then was like, well, why don't I just slap a mask on him? Which he was going to have him wear a mask anyway, because mm-hmm. actors are expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so, he can just keep getting one bum fuck to replace him. Yep. And uh, that bum fuck just happened to be Nick Castle. Mm, yeah. Um, so, he uh, just made it all in one night. And he just decided to name it, instead of the Babysitter Murders, Halloween. Yeah, and just say it's... Because he was surprised to learn that there was literally no other movie named Halloween. Yeah, which, yeah, that's kind of... I mean, shoot, like, look, go go to Tubi.com, type in the words Halloween, and just scroll, baby. <laughs> you'll find, of course, Michael, but you'll find, like, other shit. Oh, you'll, like, like, J- Jack-O-Lantern Reaper, like, like the, like the Halloween... Just, just Halloween versus Friday Thirteenth. Something that's like got nothing to do with either. Yeah, yeah. It's just a bunch of like people were like, someone had a flip phone in five minutes of their time, and they made a movie. So in closing, because I'm getting really tired and you're getting yeah. really tired. Yeah. Um, my opinions of Halloween, and my yeah. thoughts. I've always had like, uh, Halloween is kind of to me like, it's really special. I mean, it's a mm-hmm. you know my mom introduced Halloween to me. 
believe it or not. She introduced the movie to me because it's her favorite horror movie. And she knew I loved horror movies. And she's like, have you ever seen Halloween? I had heard the name, but I'd never seen it. We watched it. And like, it's a little horror tradition mm-hmm. for us. Every year in October, at some point, I watch Halloween. Whether it's the original, the 2018 movie, or any of the stupid ass sequels. I watch one of them. Because they are... They have a, a place in my heart where, as stupid as it got, with all the cults, the Curse of Thorn, all that shit, where Michael somehow is now trying to voodoo murder his entire family? Yeah, we don't talk it, about those. No, we, don't, we will one day. Yeah, we will. <laughs> I don't have time yeah. anymore. Um, I, I just, it never frightened me, Halloween, because yeah. horror movies in general just don't frighten me. See, they, they always did for me. Because you're a pussy. No, it's because I knew the real, I've always been really keen on death as a real ass thing, you know? Me, it just never frightened me. Mm. Um, but the image of Michael Myers and the concept of Michael Myers, this, this the fact that it, he's so random and so terrifyingly quiet and unassuming it's so scary to me that you know it's just nothing that compares sorry yeah i mean that's yeah i mean like it's it's all about like and it it really does show like a subtlety to it uh uh where it's kind of like i mean it didn't have this intentionally obviously because it was something new back then but it sort of has this nostalgia to it now i guess yeah. because like it's it's kind of a it's a it's a time capture to like a time in a place and then shit goes horribly wrong but still you know um you know it's very uh turning point of time in in america you know mm-hmm. uh well that is it for us for today uh this is far longer than i thought it would be um, that was and we also Hall- went out of order on the movie. But. Uh, yeah, well, whatever. That was Halloween, nineteen seventy eight. Thank you all for watching, and I hope we make a lot more of these. The curse, the revenge, the return, the final chapter. Michael lives. Halloween. <laughs> <sighs> Keep talking, bitch. No, in all seriousness, this is Halloween, nineteen seventy eight. It's nineteen seventy eight. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back with. More spooky movies? Spooky! Ooh. Yeah, all right. See you guys later. Excuse me, Laurie. Oh, Mr. Brackett, I'm sorry, Mr. Brackett. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. That's oh, all right. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Yes, sir. Nice seeing you, sir.